All right, I'm going to be book talking two books. So John Green, who's heard of them? Name some titles that you can think of that John Green has wrote. Um, one, The Fault in Our Stars. And the second one is An Abundance of Catherine. I read a couple of them, um, or I read both of them a couple of years ago. Um, An Abundance of Catherine's I thought was okay, but lots of people love it. Um, the Faults in Our Stars couldn't put down. And so I'm going to be boring and read the back of the books because they're so well written. I thought I can't put it in better words. So The Faults in Our Stars, one of your book club option says, despite the tumor shrinking medical miracle that has bought a few years, Hazel has never been anything but terminal, her final chapter inscribed upon diagnosis. But when a gorgeous plot twist named Augustus Waters suddenly appears at Cancer Kids Support Group, Hazel's story is about to be completely rewritten. And so um, the genre realistic fiction uh, topics, relationships, cancer, death, love, sensitive content, um, they're swearing, drinking, sexual content, uh, and a lot of talk about death. And so I am going to read you a part, end of chapter one, um, where um, we just got done with the cancer support group. Hazel um, and Augustus are outside waiting. And um, the main character, the narrator is Hazel. So when I say I, it's from Hazel's perspective. So I will read this section. I felt this weird mix of disappointment and anger welling up inside of me. I don't even know what the feeling was really, just that there was a lot of it and I wanted to smack Augustus Waters and also replace my lungs with lungs that didn't suck at being lungs. I was standing with my Chuck Taylors on the very edge of the curb, the ox oxygen tank ball and chaining in the cart by my side. And right as my mom pulled up, I felt a hand grab mine. I yanked my hand free, but turned back to him. They don't kill you unless you light them, he said as mom arrived at the curb. And I've never lit one. It's a metaphor, see? You put the killing thing right between your teeth, but you don't give it the power to do its killing. It's a metaphor, I said, dubious. Mom was just idling. It's a metaphor. You choose your behavior based on your metaf metaphorical resonance. I said, oh, yes, he said, the big, goofy, real smile. I'm a big believer in metaphors, Hazel Grace. I turned to the car, tapped the window, and it rolled down. I'm going to a movie with Augustus Waters, I said. Please record the next several episodes of the ANTM Marathon for me. That ends that chapter. Um, so definitely a great book that I would recommend. An Abundance of Catherine's, like I said, a lot of people really like this book. And the back says, when it comes to relationships, Colin Singleton's type of is girls named Catherine. And when it comes to girls named Catherine, Colin is always getting dumped, 19 times to be exact. On a road trip, miles from home, this anagram happy, washed up prodigy has $10,000 in his pocket, a bloodthirsty feral hog on his trail, and an overweight Judge Judy loving best friend riding shotgun but no Catherine's. Colin is on a mission to prove the theorem of underlying Catherine predictability, which he hopes will predict the future of any relationship and avenge dumpies everywhere and may finally win him the girl. So genre could fall under realistic fiction again. Um, topics would be um, talking about growing up, um, sensitive topics, there's a lot of swearing um, and there's also sexual content in the book. So, the chapter or section I picked was from chapter one. Um, and it says, his dad stood up and stepped toward him. Catherine called my cell, he said. She's worried about you. Colin felt his dad's hand on his shoulder. And then they both moved forward. And then they were hugging. We're very concerned, my mom said. She was a small woman with curly brown hair that had one single shack of white toward the front. And stunned, she added. What happened? I don't know, Colin said softly into his dad's shoulder. She just, she had enough of me. She got tired, that's what she said. And then his mom got up and there was a lot of hugging, arms everywhere, and his mom was crying. Colin extricated himself from the hugs and sat down on his bed. He felt a tremendous need to get them out of his room immediately. Like if they didn't leave, he would blow up. Literally, 
guts on the wall, his prodigious brain emptied out on his bedspread. And so that was a section with no swear words um, and um, a part of the book. And so again, two um, great options to pick from. So if one of these are calling your name, maybe these will be one of your picks. Have a good one.